There it is. The holy grail of Christmas gifts, the Red Ryder 200-shot range model air rifle. You see, all the toys Santa brings are made by these elves. Seems elves have that certain knack for toy making. What's this? It's a turtle dove. He puzzled and puzzled till his puzzle was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. God bless us, everyone! Sometimes a gift, a present, something you're anticipating can kind of consume your mind. And for him, it was an all-consuming focus and passion. He went to bed at night thinking about this present, longing for it, hoping for it. He woke up in the morning thinking about this gift. His heart just beat for it. His conversation was filled with almost nothing but talk of this potential gift. I mean, he wanted it so bad he could taste it. He, he mentioned it to everybody who would listen. It filled his heart and his mind. You might know his name, and when you know his name, you might know what the gift was. We already gave you a little hint this morning earlier in the service. His name, Ralphie. And he had an all-consuming passion. You might know the story. You may not know the story. But let me tell you, this thing he wanted, it, it just controlled his thoughts, every conversation. Anybody, anybody remember what he wanted so bad he could taste it? Anybody? Not just a BB gun, a Red Ryder BB gun, right? And, and, and sometimes when it comes to gifts, uh, we get what we want, sometimes we don't, but, but, but for this, this young man, he discovered that sometimes not only will you get gifts you were hoping for, sometimes you get gifts that you weren't hoping for. What, look at the expression on this face here. Okay, here's a gift. Go to the next, the next picture there. There you go. <laughs> Family member sends you a gift. You weren't thinking about a little outfit that mom makes you wear, and, and that's, that, that's not the, the, the sign of satisfaction and joy. We can make that go away. And, and for this little boy, Ralphie, in a Christmas story, he's longing for, he's hoping for a Red Ryder BB gun. But there's a problem. Every grown-up, every responsible person he talks to about the Red Ryder BB gun, they tell him the same reason why he should not, he could not, he will not get such a gift. And their concern is simply this. What will happen? He'll shoot his eye. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Even Santa says, you'll shoot your eye out. And so, so it, what seems hopeless, it, and yet his heart still longs for this gift, and Christmas morning comes, and gifts are opened around the tree in the living room in Ralphie's home, and, and gift after gift, and the floor is covered with shredded Christmas paper, and there's lots of different gifts, but there's not the gift. It hasn't happened. There's no Red Ryder BB gun, and all the gifts are open. It's, it's over with. And hope is dashed to the ground. But then, his father stealthily, quietly, moves over to another part of the house, unnoticed. There's one more gift. He gets that gift. He brings it over. And Ralphie sees it. And it's the right size. It's the right weight. It sounds right. Could it, could it be that his dream had come true? Well, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, if you haven't seen a Christmas story, it's on like every hour from now till Christmas. So you can find it on some of, one of the thousand channels you have. But I, I don't want to spoil the story for you. But, but what I want to talk about is this, that, that, that for this little boy, there's this dream. There's this hope. There's this longing for, for a gift, for a present. And I wonder for you, what is that dream? What is that hope? What is the gift that your heart longs for? Because I believe there's something spiritual going on when it comes to this issue of gift giving and gift receiving. We're going to talk about that today. I think you're going to see something in God's word that's going to give you a new perspective on gifts that maybe you haven't had before. Because there's something, I think, something spiritual going on when we're giving and receiving gifts. 
The longing of the human heart is this. We all appreciate a gift that is thoughtful and given in love. There's something that happens in us. When someone comes to us and says, this is for you, and they give us a gift. When someone offers us a gift, or when we offer someone a gift with the right spirit, with the, with the thoughtfulness, with the right attitude, it touches a person deep in their soul. There's something about giving and receiving gifts. And I believe God is, God is in this. God is working. Now, I, I didn't know how to give gifts as I was growing up. I really didn't. I knew how to buy stuff and wrap stuff and hand it to somebody. It wasn't until I got married that I learned how to give gifts. Because I learned that gifts, as a husband, I learned gifts have to be thoughtful. <laughs> I learned that gifts have to be planned in advance. I learned that gifts, there's, there's certain things that make a gift. I'm seeing, I'm seeing men getting shoved by their wives. See, I told you. I actually saw, saw a guy go, what? What'd I do? Um, but but I, I learned getting married that, that you, know, you should think ahead and, and you should pay attention through the year as a husband and listen to your wife as she makes mention of things and make a mental note and kind of tuck it away and come back. That, is that beginning what I'm saying here? That's part of the deal. I've learned, I didn't know this before I got married, but I've learned this. There's something about being thoughtful and, and, and getting the right kind of gift because, because when you give a gift to somebody that means something, it isn't just a thing, it touches their soul. It does something more. I have up here some different gifts that were given to me that I've kept. These are actually different things that are in my office at home or my office here at the church. This one right here is a beautiful glass vase with 50 golf balls in it. Now, these are old, kind of, kind of uh, scrubby old golf balls in here. But when this was given to me on my 50th birthday by a friend of mine, it had 50 brand new Titleist Pro V golf balls. Now, if you're not a golfer, that doesn't mean anything to you. But if you're a golfer, you say amen. You know, if you're a golfer, because that's, 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 that's my kind of golf ball. That's what I play. And this friend of mine noticed what I play. And on my 50th birthday, gave me 50 beautiful golf balls. If he had given me 50 roses, not only would it have been a bit weird, but it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have mattered to me because I don't, I don't want roses, but pro V golf balls, yes, right? And so this actually, this actually, this little vase it stays in my office at home. But not to remind me about golf as much as to remind me that there was somebody who cared enough to pay attention to something that mattered to me and to give me a gift that touched me. I also have here a real interesting gift, a gift. This was actually given to me. It's a pocket watch that a friend actually bought when it was old and messed up. He rebuilt it, cleaned it, rebuilt it, got it working again. And on a Sunday when I preached about gift giving sometime back, I told the story of the gift of the Magi. And the gift of the Magi, they're very simple stories. There's a husband and wife who love each other very much. They're very poor. The husband at Christmas time sells his pocket watch, his most prized possession, so he can get these beautiful combs, these decorative combs for his wife's hair. She, since so she has no money, sell, has her hair cut and sells it to a wig maker and buys him a beautiful chain for his pocket watch. <laughs> so on Christmas Day, he has no watch, but he has a chain. She has no hair, but she has combs. And, this, and, and so this, this person heard me tell that story and actually gave me this pocket watch. This, this sits in my office on a table with the part of the story of the Magi, some Bible passages, and that watch to remind me that somebody wanted to give me something that was precious to them and that's just a reminder for me. This is really interesting. This sits in my study where my library is. And it's six hand, handmade beautiful dominoes. A pastor, a Chinese-speaking pastor who pastors a Chinese church, took his congregation through a book I wrote over 10 years ago called Seismic Shifts. And on the, book, on the cover of the book, there's these dominoes where you stand them up on end, you push one, and it hits this chain reaction where the dominoes start to fall. Well, he made these dominoes for every member of his congregation. Yeah, he gave them each one domino. They could pick their favorite one from the six different portions of the book. He gave me the only set of all six dominoes. Wow. And these sit in my office to remind me of that friendship. And just about three days ago, I was over at the mall at a restaurant, and Hiromi Yonenda, this pastor who's now retired, walked in with his wife, Marsha. And he had seen Sherry, and Sherry had said, hey, Kevin's over there, and we had finished dinner, and she was doing some shopping, and they sent him over to say hi. And I said, I said, and I, did, I, I, said, I said, Hiromi, do you know that I still keep your dominoes that you made for me in my office? And every time I look at them, I think of not only that you took this book that I wrote and shared it with your congregation, but you blessed me. There's something about a gift that's thoughtful, that's gracious. There's more going on in that exchange of a gift than just 
the exchange of a gift. I want to ask you just in your own mind to think for a minute. What is the best gift someone ever gave you? I mean, just, just stop for a minute. You may have to go back to childhood. You may go back to last year or yesterday. But you know what, what is one of the best gifts someone ever gave you? Maybe, maybe it's something like this. A, a simple, treasured, material possession that reminds you of a moment. That reminds you of a person. Maybe it's when somebody gave you the gift of telling you the truth. Some, pe- some people in my life have loved me enough through the years to tell me the truth in ways that would help me grow to become more who I should be. That's a gift. Maybe it was somebody who gave you time. Boy, one of the most precious gifts we can give to somebody is time. I think of when my wife went to spend time with my mom. We, knew she, we, we didn't know if she was going to die, but we knew she was really very, very sick. and fam- We had different family things going on, and we were working on some things. So my wife, I remember my wife sat for hours with my mom, singing songs, hymns of praise and reading scriptures to my mom not fully knowing that it was just going to be days until she actually passed away. That's a gift that she gave to my family and to my mom. Maybe it's a gift of friendship, a friendship that endures over time. I've got a buddy of mine who I I did ministry with. He was a pastor on the staff of the church I pastored in Michigan. He's now in Southern California. His name is Don Porter. He's preached here before. He's a dear friend. In the last week, he called me three times. You know, you sometimes put that phone tag back and forth, back and forth. He just kept calling me, and he finally got through to me. I said, Don, what's up? He says, I just wanted to say, I miss you. I think of you. How you doing? How's your family? That's a gift. What's the best gift you've been given? And the truth is you've been given lots of gifts. And then turn that around. What's the best gift you've ever given to someone else? What is the best gift you've given to another person? Maybe it was words of blessing, somebody who was hurting and struggling, and you came with just the right words, with kindness and with grace, and you spoke blessing into their hearts. Maybe it's tears of compassion where somebody was hurting and going through a tough time and you just sat with them and their pain became your pain and tears flowed. And when they saw those tears, they knew a depth of love that you had for them. Maybe that was the gift you gave. Maybe it's the gift of a powerful, heartfelt prayer. Maybe you came alongside of somebody when they were in need and just prayed for them and prayed for God's power and healing and blessing and presence. Maybe it's a simple, thoughtful gift. It's just a small thing you've given. I know for my wife, one of the best gifts I can give her is fresh fruit. That's, she, she, loves, she loves fresh fruit. And so sometimes I'll just get, I'll just get, if I, I'll get a little something and give it to her, and it's like, that's, that means, I don't know what it is, but what are the gifts you've received and what are the gifts you've given? Now, now here's the spiritual reality I want to share with you. And, and I hope this sinks into your heart. I hope you get this. God's divine design is that God is the giver of every good gift. Every good gift that you've ever received, somehow God is part of that. And the reality is that when you receive a gift given in love, given thoughtfully, given in a caring way, or when you give a gift to someone else, listen closely, God is present in that moment. Even for me, growing up in a home with no faith, with no church, when my, I, I believe that when my parents would give me gifts that were thoughtful and caring and loving, my parents were very loving people, uh, when they, my parents would give me gifts, I believe that even though they don't re- recognize it, God was present in that moment. Now, why do I say that? Well, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of James. The book of James is a short little book, and near the back of the Bible, if you're not sure how to find James, just go to the very back of the Bible. You find the book of Revelation. Just start kind of moving back this way in your Bible, and you'll go past 1st, you know, 2nd, 3rd Peter, 1st, 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. You'll find the book of James. In the very beginning of James, chapter 1, I want you to hear these words inspired by the Holy Spirit about our God and about gifts. Beginning in verse 16 of James, chapter 1. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Sitting on this table are three different gifts that people have given me. And I believe those gifts were given by those people. But listen closely. I believe that ultimately God provided all all that I have and God provided these gifts through those people. I believe God that God blessed me with gifts through my parents even though they weren't following Jesus and didn't understand it. God was present because every good and perfect gift is from above. You hear that? So there's something that happens spiritually in this time of year at Christmas time. I want to challenge you to notice God's presence as you give gifts. Would you say, oh God, be present in the giving of this gift. 
May this person, if they're a Christian, feel your presence. May this person, if they're not yet a Christian, somehow experience the presence of a loving God because of this gift that I'm giving. With each gift you receive, will you say, God, I acknowledge your goodness. I acknowledge that you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We need to learn to recognize that the blessings, the gifts that are poured out on us are gifts from our Father in heaven. Every one of them, every good and perfect gift. So, the gift of people. One of the greatest gifts in our lives are the people that God puts in our lives, the people that God brings along. God, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me these people and putting them in my life. The gift of our senses, taste, smells, sights, touch, all from God. If you live in the Salinas Valley and you watch the, the sun rise over the hills of the Salinas Valley, it's a gift from the Father. If you live along the coast and you watch the sun set over the ocean, it's a gift from the Father. All of these things. A good meal with wonderful taste around a table with friends is a gift from God. And a delicious, simple meal sitting by ourselves is a gift from God. If we'll recognize God's presence. The gift of material things. The material things that we have. All a gift. Every good and perfect gift, every good and perfect gift comes from above from the Father of heavenly lights. The gift of time. Another day. Another hour. A gift from God. The time you give to other people is a gift from the hand of God. I think even of the gift of imagination, our ability to think and to imagine, to see pictures in our minds, that's a gift. This ability that we don't even recognize sometimes, that sometimes we use in the strangest ways, but, but to, that I could stop right now, I mean, I could stop right in this moment, and I can think to, to one of my favorite places in the world. So, <clears throat> it's a little strip of sand in Newport Beach, in Balboa Peninsula, at the end of the peninsula, and there's a jetty that goes out from Newport Harbor at kind of a funny angle, these stacked rocks out into the ocean, and then the coast kind of comes at a different angle and creates this wedge. Actually, this area is called the wedge. And when waves break into this area on the sand there, they get stuck and they go across ways, kind of sideways across the, the shore. And then when the next wave comes, they build into a, a bigger wave. So a 10-foot wave becomes a 20-foot wave. And there's a left break that is just the most powerful, wonderful, beautiful body surfing break on the planet. I spent countless hours there. And I was just there. I don't mean last week or yesterday. I mean just now. I was just there. I was. I can picture it. I can see it. I can, I can think of those who've gone before me to be with Jesus. I think of my, my, my family, my extended family had very few Christians, but my dad's mom, my granny, Betty Harney, was a Christian woman. And, and, I, and I can remember my granny, even though she's been gone and been with Jesus for almost 20 years. I can close my eyes and I can, I can picture her. My granny, every morning, she would, she would braid her hair and she would put it on top of her head. And then every night, she would unbraid it and take it down. And I remember my granny, she had a stool she would stand on because when she took her hair down, all these, all these, uh, bobby, you know, all these bobby pins she'd take out, unbraid it, undo the braids, and she'd stand on the stool because if she didn't stand on the stool, when she would bend her head and brush her hair, it would touch the ground. And so she would brush, and I would remember, she'd brush like, she'd brush down, and then grab it and pull it up, brush, and then grab it and pull it up, and brush to get all the way to the bottom. She'd brush out her hair, she'd braid it up again, she'd put it on top of her hair. You'd only see her with her hair down when she was brushing it at the end of the day, but that was, that was a daily ritual for my granny. I haven't seen her for over 20 years, but I can stop right now and I can see her. I can hear, she would sing with this beautiful voice and whistle as she walked around her house. Where do we get this? ability to not just imagine and create, but imagine and remember and memories and, and this creative imagination to bring things back to ourselves that are long gone or far away. It's a gift from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. The gift of intellect. Shoreline is filled with people who, who are, are, are great thinkers, who, who, who think and work in the area of, 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 of U.S. military or in law enforcement or in public service or school teachers or in the sports world or in the, in the resort industry, but they, they figure things out and, and they're people who discover things and learn things. They use their intellect to make the world a better place. How, where does that come from? It's a gift from God. Art, music, drama, paintings, sculptures, Music, where, where, where does this gift come from? It's a gift from God. And sometimes we can go through our daily lives and even a week like the week coming up and have like these reminders of actual gifts right in front of us and we miss that God is in the midst of all of this. God is here with us because every good and perfect gift comes from above, from our heavenly father 
who doesn't change like shifting shadows. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we can meet and encounter God in these moments of recognizing the good gifts he's given to us. What gifts have you received? Because they're all from the hand of God. I want to encourage you, not just this Christmas season, but throughout your life, to notice and to recognize the good gifts that God gives and to do some simple things. First, say thank you. Say thank you. When, 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 when this friend gave me these golf balls, I said thank you to him. But I should also pause and say, and by the way, Lord, thank you. What a wonderful gift. Every good and perfect gift is from you. It's from my heavenly father. Just pause and say thank you to God. Notice all of the gifts that God has given. A beautiful sunrise, a beautiful sunset, a wonderful conversation, a great meal, a simple gift that somebody hands to you and, and you open and enjoy. But say thank you to them, but also say thank you to God because he's the giver of every good and perfect gift. Notice and enjoy. God delights like a loving parent. Sometimes if you watch Christmas experiences and there's kids getting gifts, they'll have so many gifts, they'll kind of like tear one open. Oh, this is nice. Throw it. Oh, this is nice. And there's not this kind of slowing down and enjoying it. And I think when God sees you and when God sees me, slow down and enjoy the people around us. When parents enjoy their children, when siblings enjoy each other, when churches enjoy worshiping God in song, when, when we appreciate the beauty of creation and we, when we notice, I think that God just takes delight when his children slow down and notice. So slow down and then drink it in. You know, kind of pause. And as you're going through life, as you're going through your days and God shows you a gift, reminds you of a gift, gives you a new gift through someone or just by his hand, just slow down and look and drink it in. Last night, we had a whole group of artists in our home, singers and musicians from Shoreline Church. They did a Christmas party and they, they met in our living room and dining room and kitchen and had, and had a meal together, shared a meal. And it was, it was so wonderful. And, and, then, and then after the meal was shared and after some kind of some, some teaching and some ideas, they, they just sat and worshiped together. Our, they, these folks who lead you, who just come at six in the morning on Sundays and stay till one in the afternoon to serve you, to lead you into God's presence. They gathered in our living room and they, and they just real simply with Cole and Bryn who are leading to, today on just folding chairs in our living room with one guitar and their voices, but then the voices of all these musicians just singing songs of praise to God. And I kind of stood off to the left-hand side here and I was just worshiping and part of things and I, and I looked across my living room and I saw these beautiful people who love Jesus and love their church and serve you so faithfully and serve me so faithfully, lead us into God's presence and I just said, Lord, thank you. What a gift this is. What a beautiful thing. I, I looked and saw over to the right here, and it struck me. A drummer and a keyboard player and a guitar player who've never played yet. They're brand new on our worship team. But in the next month or two, you'll meet them as they come to lead you in worship. And I saw over here a couple of couples who've been on the Shoreline worship team for over 20 years. And all of them together, filling our home with praise to Jesus worshiping together. And I just, I just stood there and looked and I, just, and I just found myself saying, God, what a gift. This too is a gift from the living God. We need to slow down and notice that God has lavished us and poured out good and amazing gifts. Behold, Jesus offers what your heart longs for. Your longing may not be for a Red Ryder BB gun, but there's something your heart longs for. It's things like peace and love and care and community and all the things our souls long for. And Jesus is the one who brings us. When, we, when, when Jesus was born, going to the very beginning in Bethlehem on that first Christmas, when Jesus was born, we met the giver and the gift all wrapped in one. We, when we see Jesus, we can say, behold, that's the right word. That's this glorious word, behold, because Jesus is both the gift and the giver, all wrapped in a blanket and put in a manger. I mean, think about it. These gifts that I received were given by people who love me, and I say, okay, God gave it through them, but this gift of Jesus, he gave himself. He is the gift he, he is the, the greatest gift and most valuable gift in all of history, infinitely valuable. God with us, Emmanuel. He is the gift, but listen to this. 
This child born in Bethlehem is also the gift giver. He gives us every gift we have, including the gift of his own life. And he is the most expensive of all gifts, the most valuable and the most expensive. Behold, this baby born in the manger is the greatest gift the world has ever seen and had offered to us. He's the greatest gift, and he is the giver of every gift because he is Emmanuel, God with us. Behold. And let your heart and mind dwell on that reality. This baby born in Bethlehem is the gift and the giver of every good gift. In the Gospel of Luke, Luke tells the Christmas story with these words. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 4 to 7. Luke tells a simple story of the coming of Jesus with these words. Luke 2, beginning of verse 4. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. God has come into human history. He's born. So Luke tells the story of Jesus born and placed in a manger, the gift and the giver of every gift. Now John, the Gospel of John, tells the story very differently. John tells the story in theological terms. So John's name for Jesus is the logos, the word. This word logos in our, our language, in the Greek it's logos, in English it's the word. Listen to how the Gospel of John tells the story of Jesus coming into the world. In the beginning was the word, that's Jesus. This is John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And through him, through Jesus, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Both the Gospels of Luke and John tell the story of God entering human history. So like any gift, when it's offered to us, we have to do something with it. People offer us a gift and we can choose to receive it or not. So what do we do with this gift? Here's my suggestion. Unwrap and enjoy the gift you've been waiting for. What your heart longs for, what your heart needs the most, what your life needs the most is found in the gift and the giver. It's found in Jesus Christ. So unwrap and enjoy the gift you've been waiting for. So how do we receive and share this greatest of gifts? I mean, how do we receive the gift of Jesus and share the gift of Jesus? Well, first, I want to ask you a question. And it may sound like a strange question. But I want to ask you a question. And I want you to hear this. Do you long for and desire and hunger for the gift of Jesus as much as Ralphie hungered for a Red Ryder BB gun? That may sound like a weird question, right? But I mean it. Little Ralphie in A Christmas Story, he dreamt about this gift. He went to bed thinking about this gift. He woke up thinking about this gift. He talked about the gift he wanted with everybody who would listen. He was relentless because he wanted it that much. When it comes to Jesus, if you're a follower of Christ, if you come to the cross and received him, let me ask a question. Do you go to bed at night? thinking about Jesus and saying, I want to know him more. Do you wake up in the morning hungering for Jesus? Do you find yourself talking with people about how much he means to you and how much you want to know him more? Does a little boy in a, in, in a movie long for a toy more than we long for the gift of all gifts and the giver of gifts? And I think sometimes we forget the greatness of this gift. And, and so how do we receive this gift? And I mean, how do you receive the gift of Jesus for the first time, but also how do you receive the gift of Jesus day after day after day? Because if you're a follower of Jesus, you need to continue to receive that gift and walk in the goodness of that gift. Well, first, open your heart. Just make a commitment and say, I open my heart to know Jesus more. I open my heart to love Jesus more. To, as you go to bed at night, say, God, my heart longs to know Jesus. As you wake up in the morning, Jesus, I want to walk with you this day. Open your heart to Jesus. And if you've never done that for the first time, say, oh God, if you love me, if Jesus is real, 
If he really lived a life on this world, if he came God with us, if he offers me every good gift, if he died on the cross and gave himself as the final gift, I want to know that Jesus. I open my heart to that Jesus. And then open your life. Would you, would you say to God, God, th- my life is yours. All of it. Top to bottom, beginning to end. God, I offer you my life. Be- being a Christian following Jesus, knowing the gift of Jesus, isn't just a one moment I become a Christian. It is an ongoing journey of our lives being led by Jesus. If you want to receive the gift of Jesus every day, say, Lord, my life is yours. What will you do with me? How will you work through me? And I tell you what, God will lead you on a glorious adventure of life. And then really practically, open your schedule. Make room for God in your schedule. I I bless you that you're here today and in the family worship (coughs) venue and online. And as we say, okay, I, I'm, I give God this hour, this hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes of my day, of my week. But every day, say, God, I want you to be part of what I do, part of where I go. Making space for God in the flow of life. And then sharing the gift. How do we share this gift with others? If you know Jesus, if you've received the gift of Jesus, if he truly is God with us, the greatest gift and the giver of all gifts, you want others to know him. So how do we do that? First, tell your story. Just tell your story of who Jesus is to you. When somebody says to you, hey, what's the best Christmas gift you ever ever received? Tell them about how you received Jesus. That's your story. No one's story is just like your story. You have your own story. I was 15, almost 16, grew up in a non-Christian home. My wife was five years old, grew up in a Christian home. We have different stories, but it's the story of how we met Jesus. Just tell, if people want to know what Christmas is about, tell the story of how you came to know Jesus. And then tell his story. Tell the story of the manger. Tell the story of the cross. Tell the story of the empty tomb. Tell the story of God's love for all who will receive Jesus. And learn to tell the story of Jesus. Say, Jesus, help me learn to tell that story. And here's the reality. Most of us could tell the simple story of Jesus. We're just nervous to do it. But we can do it. Tell your story, tell his story, and then offer a prayer. This Christmas season, you're going to be with family and friends, and you're going to be in office Christmas parties and different interactions with people, and you're going to interact, I will predict this, you're going to interact with somebody, whether you're in middle school or high school or whatever your your phase of an age of life, you're going to run into somebody in the next week who's going to start sharing with you something really tough they're going through, really difficult. And I want to challenge you to say to them, can I just take a minute and say a prayer for you. And if you know that they're not a churchgoer, not a Christian, you can say, I know know it's maybe not your thing, but man, I believe there's power in prayer. I would be so honored if you would let me just take just a moment and say a prayer for you. Would that be okay? The worst they're gonna say is this. Yeah, no thanks, that's not my thing. But almost everybody you ask that question is gonna actually look at you and say, I'd really like that. You would do that for me? Oh, I would love that. I want to suggest for some of you, you're going to be gathered with family for a meal at Christmas time. And I want to challenge you to say, hey, would it be okay if I said a prayer? Or maybe ask whoever's hosting the meal. If it's your home, I'd say, go ahead and just say, I'm going to lead us in a short prayer. If you get in written protests later, worry about that later. I don't think you will. Um, but, but I want to challenge you to bring prayer because when we pray, God shows up and God is present. And then finally, how do we share the gift? I want to give you a very practical challenge. I want to challenge you to invite somebody to church next Sunday. Next Sunday is Christmas Eve Sunday. That only happens like every seven years, something like that. And so we actually have Christmas Eve is on a Sunday. We have the three morning services, regular times. We have a four o'clock service that you can bring your kids into. We have a five o'clock service that's Spanish speaking service. And we have an 11 o'clock candlelight communion service, which is a whole different service. Invite Friends and family. And we've got actually invitations in your bulletin in English on the connection uh, table out there in Spanish for the Spanish service. And I really want to challenge you to pray and say, Lord, who might I invite? And studies would tell you that almost half the people that get invited to Christmas or Easter services, almost half the people invited by a friend that they respect will say yes. So if we all invited one person, there's going to be a couple thousand people here today. That'd be about a thousand visitors next week. If they're about family and friends, we'll set up extra chairs. But I want to encourage you to make that invitation and say, Lord, that's the way I can give the gift of sharing the story of Jesus. I believe that every good and perfect gift, though given by the hands of another person, it may seem is ultimately from the hands of God. 
And God's given us gift upon gift upon gift. And the greatest of all the gifts that God gives is this gift. That the one born in the manger is the greatest of gifts and is the giver of every gift. And this Christmas, let's worship him. Lord Jesus, I pray as we go from here, we go profoundly aware of how good you've been to us, the richness of your gifts to us, that as we give and receive gifts in this coming week, we will sense your presence with us. And Jesus, may we celebrate that you are the greatest gift we have ever received, the King of kings and Lord of lords, enfleshed, born to give his life for us, to bring us back to, to the Father. May we celebrate that, and may we share that good news with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.